SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is Izomi Nishimura, and um, I'm currently a postdoc in Chris Schaefer's lab at Cornell in biomedical engineering. Um, I did my graduate work in the lab of David Kleinfeld in the physics department, also linked up with uh, uh, neuroscience. And um, I'm currently here, and um, the work that I kind of am interested in is using uh, femtosecond lasers to study certain problems in biology, certainly related to neurodegenerative diseases. One of the things that I'm working on now is trying to understand what, is, what it is that triggers Alzheimer's disease. And um, Alzheimer's disease is a disease in the brain um, that, that um, affects the neurons and also involves the interaction of many different types of cells, the blood vessels, the immune system. And so to do this study, uh, what we need is technologies that let us look into the brain and also manipulate the brain and then adjust experiments so we can mimic um, the disease states that we find in humans. We use two primary laser technologies or um, technologies that use the laser. One is multi-photon microscopy, um, which uses femtosecond lasers, high intensity lasers to do fluorescence microscopy. And what's special about this is that you can do um, micron resolved, cellular resolved imaging within a scattering sample like a living brain. The second technology that we use is um, actually manipulating things in the brain, in our case vasculature, with laser ablation. And the key to this, this technology is actually um, high intensity femtosecond lasers. We use high intensity lasers um, to ablate certain structures in the brain that can uh, mimic disease states that we find in humans. But one of the things that we find in human patients is that um, people develop um, clots and hemorrhages in the brain in the very smallest capillaries. And um, these are thought to be related to um, sort of dysfunctions that lead to cognitive impairment, especially later in life in an Alzheimer's disease. And to be able to study this, what we need is tools that can get um, us down to this very fine spatial scale, but within the living brain, um, to be able to make clots and hemorrhages um, that look like what we find in patients. So what we do is we um, use femtosecond lasers to actually ionize portions of a capillary within the brain. And this causes a little bit of bleeding and it also triggers the endogenous clotting cascade and then leads to a clot or maybe a bleed in just one small capillary. And this is of interest to us because it looks like these clots and hemorrhages can trigger cellular processes that lead to uh, neural dysfunction and eventually probably to dementia. The key um, to these experiments is that we can go subsurface within a highly scattered sample. And the way that uh, femtosecond lasers lead to this is because all of the interactions, whether it's fluorescence imaging or this uh, multi-photon ionization, they rely on the interactions of multiple photons. And so you really only reach the intensities where you get um, the significant amount of this multi-photon interaction at the focus of one of these femtosecond lasers. So without the, this uh, femtosecond laser high intensity um, technology, we really wouldn't be able to do this within um, the depth of a living tissue. So what we have here is actually two uh, home-built two-photon uh, two microscopes. And then um, the laser in front of us is um, an amplifier for um, making high energy pulses for the ablation. And so in our experiments, um, we use anesthetized rodents. And um, these rodents are often transgenic animals that mimic things like uh, Alzheimer's disease or have fluorescent proteins within the brain so we can um, see what's actually going on. Um, and um, these two setups are used for um, imaging the neurons and the blood vessels within a living brain. And the second laser is used for um, ablating uh, the vasculature to make these small clots and hemorrhages to study stroke. With these tools, we can finally manipulate um, living biology on the cellular scale, but within uh, an intact organism. And this lets us address questions that um, involve the interactions of um, many different kinds of tissue, um, different physiology. For example, 
um, in the brain, you have the neurons and the blood vessels, you also have things like the immune system. And that sort of complex interaction is only found when you can have the whole living organism. Um, and so with the imaging that is enabled by multifunctional microscopy, the manipulation of um, the cell types and the, um, the tissues that's enabled by the femtosecond laser ablation lets us probe within the complex living organism. And um, a lot of the diseases that we're interested in, a lot of the biology that we're interested in, um, results from the interaction of um, all of these different systems. And it's with tools like this that we can finally get to the point where we might be able to ask the questions in the whole system and hopefully um, understand what is going on in the disease and also um, in normal function.